today I am in the stunning, stunning location overlooking the Chu Valley Lake here in the Chu Valley, Bristol. And we're going to be looking at the Polish Lavu, okay, the mighty Polish Lavu versus making a tent out of a tarpaulin. You know, which is going to be better for win winter camping? So in here is the Polish Lavu and in here is the trusted DD Hammocks 3x4 tarp okay it's the xl one i'll put a link to these bits and pieces in the box below what we're actually talking about here is a much older question which is canvas versus synthetic okay so that is the dd hammocks tarp Okay, in addition to this, to make it a kind of an equal fair test, you're probably also gonna need an additional ground sheet. Now this thing I've not covered before, and it comes with bits and pieces inside, which we'll take a look at in just a moment. And it's probably a good, I'm gonna say two kilo heavier than this is. And this is barely a kilo. I did also have a ground sheet for this additionally. And what I've got here is one of the old school, this is an ad adapted poncho. Some of you watching this, some of you former soldiers in the British military will recognise this material. It's kind of almost almost like a heavy waxed canvas of sort, but it's been cut into a, into a rectangle. I think this is, was a poncho at one point in its life, and it's been a kit repairer has turned it into, uh, into the Mark I basher, poncho, whatever you want to call it. All I'm going to need is the tarpaulin itself, maybe some additional paracord to put on some of the corners, we'll find out in just a moment, and probably one of these. A bog standard walking stick. <laughs> Spot what I've forgotten, 10 pegs. Fortunately at HVB, I've always got a large miscellaneous massive mix and match 10 pegs. I'm going to peg down the midway point, fold it in half, then I'm gonna find the corners and I'm gonna move in one loop and peg that down there. Okay, this is the middle. Once I've put the middle in there, I'm then gonna turn one half over the other half. Okay, so I've laid it inside facing the sky. I've pegged it at the halfway marks. Got the outside showing, so it was there. Folded it over, pegged it at the halfway mark. Now comes the bit that people think is a dark art. It's not, it's just practice. Okay, so all I'm doing is taking two temp pegs out and I'm gonna go to the corner, and pull this out so it's nice and accurate and it's the one on top that I'm interested in so I'm going to take this corner as thus and all I'm doing now is moving this corner in to where this one here actually wants to sit I'm going to put that down so that they're in line with each other and I'm going to go and peg that there and do exactly the same on the other corner Make sure that you pull the bottom one out so they're nice and even. Okay, and you've got that good line. And then same again, I'm gonna take this corner and I'm gonna put it here where that one wants to go. And I'm gonna peg that down. What I now should have is my tarp folded in half, outer on the bottom, outer on the top. Now this doesn't actually want to be on show to the outdoors anymore. We can begin to think about tucking this underneath because it's non-essential. If this was raining, okay, you'd be, you'd be, this would be a priority to get these underneath. Now here's the sciencey part where we take our walking stick. These poles are adjustable for those of you who've never seen one of these before. Goes without saying, guys, you're using a tarpaulin. It's a thin synthetic. It doesn't have maybe the durability of the canvas. So you are going to need to think about smoothing over the top. If it's a stick, you're gonna to want to shave that over. I'm gonna put it just forward, slightly forward of the toggle that's on the top here. Here's the toggle on the top. 
Now my pole doesn't want to be smack in the middle, I'm going to have it slightly further forward and that's so I can shape the porch a little bit easier. Now for the fun part. Before I start this, I should probably go ahead and say you're best off putting a peg at that midway point. It's not a permanent peg, it just means it's not going to scrunch up inside as you're getting in there. You may want to take your boots off as well. You can go for a little bit more height here, I think. This ground sheet's optional. You can, of course, pull this out, take the ground sheet and shove it away. Now what we've got here, okay, is a central hood and then two other loops equidistant uh, halfway up from the corner to the top here. Fix these ones first, okay, and then think about your hood last. Okay, just create a simple windlass um, arrangement. And what you'll do there is create a door that's a bit more closed off to the weather. Much more Lavu-esque, just with a simple peg in the top there. Ta-da! Okay, with the option of ground sheet coming literally right up to here. It's actually pretty spacious. This is a good option for, for more than one person to sleep in. So I'm going to show you some hacks and modifications and a little something, a quick trick you can do on the top of this at the end of the video. So wait out and, uh, and we'll look at that once they're both side by side. So if we take out our little uh, one peg wonder. And what I am going to need here, guys, is a piece of uh, cordage on here and on here. I'm just going to use the little loop that's on here and put a loop. through a loop and tighten that down. Okay, and I'm gonna take this corner and I'm gonna come and pin this down to this one here. Okay, I'm gonna lay this over the top so I make the number four. I'm gonna come inside once. I'm gonna come inside twice. Okay, and once I've come inside twice, I'm gonna go around the finger, bring the finger over the top and then this, this piece in my hand, which is what's left of the rope, all of this is gonna come the whole way through. What this means is I'm gonna have myself a nice adjustable cordage uh, that I can then tighten down on the, uh, the tension on that. Coming over to this one, I'm gonna need a piece of cordage here. I'm gonna do exactly the same. Now what I've got is this lovely opening here. It gives me that final piece of the puzzle, which is to just pull this hood tight. I've already got a pre-made loop on here, which is gonna go through a loop. Okay, nice and easy. Probably best that this one happens to be a brightly coloured one, I'm less likely to then knock it. Pop that down. Same thing again, over the top. Adjustable once. Inside twice. Round the finger and over. And I'm gonna pull all of this through. Now's really your chance to go around and kind of tart this thing up. If it needs a bit more tension here or there, you're able to do it. Now for me, this truly is part of the joy of working with tarps, is they're so versatile. Absolutely stacks of room for myself and my equipment in there, which is fantastic. Setup time when you're not trying to do this as a teach on YouTube, around sort of three or four minutes once you get your eye in. We're gonna now take a look at the Polish Lavu, get that out and see what that looks like by comparison. First up, you're gonna need a ground sheet. Now the ground sheet's helpful because as soon as this canvas starts sucking up water, it's getting heavy. So open your ground sheet out. I was actually given this by a lovely chap who lives over in Swindon Way. He was a scoutmaster, so he had a couple of these. Okay, so straight away, you can see the shape of it. Almost looks like a coat with a hood, and you'd be right to think that. That was a bit of a fun pack that fell out of here, which is six poles and some tent pegs. They're aluminium poles, so they're incredibly lightweight. Little poles you can see here. And they simply just click together. And they come in halves and they're buttoned together. So it took me about 20 minutes to attach two of these together to form what then becomes basically a teepee. You're just going to put the poles together, shove that up inside, double the hood over, so that the rain and wind can't get into it. One side I've done up completely. All these are done up and the other, I've just done the top two. Lay the thing out 
peg it out the whole way around, climb inside, put the pole up the middle. Shazam. And they come apart quite easily. This could possibly be replaced by another walking stick. But we'll see how we fare up with the poles we've been given. Now I'm gonna find what I feel is the back. That'd be that one there. And when it comes to these, where it's been clipped together, I'm gonna to eclipse these over each other. Okay, as my start point, right down the middle where all the buttons are. And then I'm simply gonna work my way around with the pegs, putting this in. Okay, now at this point, I feel like I'm gonna climb inside and stick some poles up. For me now, the game is to try and get these wibbly wobbly poles that come apart really easily every two seconds. Okay, and I've got to try and get these up inside here. Now I have to try and feed feed this pole all the way into underneath here. That really is quite tricky. Just so you can get an idea for the initial size comparison here already. <laughs> okay. Let's put these door ones in and have a look at how it sits. Ta-da! Right, there we go, Polish Labu. It's actually got some good height to it and it's slightly taller than the setup I've created with the tarp. So those steeper sides are gonna shed water uh, and snow a little bit faster. It's got these vents which would be arms, okay? Your arms would normally go through here if you were using it as a poncho. That's basically it guys. So less working parts, heavier, heavy duty, heavier duty needs and requires that ground sheet on the inside there. I could comfortably get in there with the dog happily, I think. Being that it's made of canvas and it's not scared of fire, I could have a fire and maybe have it open fronted fairly close by, whereas with the tarpaulin, that's not gonna be an option. Let's have a look over at the tarp and I'm just gonna show you a quick and easy trick to give it a bit more rigidity and strength uh, in open ground like this when it's a little bit windy. Okay, you can see I've folded over the sheet, pinned it and tidied it up a bit more. It looks a bit better now. Stacks of room. Grab yourself two bits of brightly coloured uh, paracord. They're gonna need to be pretty long. Now the knot I'd like to show you here, and this is called a Honda knot. So you're going to make a little thumb knot in the top here first, okay? And the whole purpose of this thumb knot is to hold the thing together, but it works on it by biting down on itself. Okay, all you're gonna do is twist and make a, a twist. So you've got a knot and a loop. Okay, and this one's going behind. And then all I'm gonna do is pop a loop or make a loop that goes up through. And that is basically it. Now at the moment, it's not doing an awful lot. But this loop is then what gets popped over the top here. Okay, and tighten down on. It slightly changes the profile and the lines of this thing, but I haven't had any problems with it. And then you're gonna run this out. Generally what I try to do is whichever way the wind's going, at the moment I've got a gentle wind coming across the front of both of these. Okay, so I would place one into the prevailing wind like that, but not, not obstructing my uh, exit or entry into the uh, actual tarpaulin itself. Okay, and I'd go and pin that one down and then I'd run another one over the top and run it away. So it's going from the top in line out there. Looks like something like this. Okay, so you can see we've got one coming up over here, secured tightly on there. One coming off of here, same sketch, going round on that adjustable figure of four. Okay, and then I've just tied up the excess so it's not left hanging on the floor. That gives you what we call in the uh, Royal Marines a warm and fuzzy. A warm and fuzzy feeling inside, you're less likely to have a complete disaster in the middle of the night. Now when it comes to the Polish Lavu, it is pretty much a bit of an endless game. Some of the most common mods. Making this a zip. These bits here are becoming zippered as well. I'm seeing a toggle on the top so that I can suspend it from a tree and do away with the pole altogether. On the inside, there is also an option 
for a drop down piece to come down here, something you can attach a light to or a central lamp or something. And then I've seen with these flaps, alternative options where pockets are being created all the way around the outside. If you're always gonna use it in this setup, well, I'd just go ahead and get that sewn over. So my personal thoughts, I think that's highly, highly versatile. It takes a bit more setting up though. For cool factor, me being a fairly new dad and I'm gonna take my little boy camping, I think that is worth investing. And I'm generally thinking about sending that off to be done up, as I've just described, have all the modifications made, and then using that later on this winter if I can get it back in time. I'm generally thinking about doing that because that is so cool. If you've got any more comments, leave them in the box below. I'm Nick Goldsmith from Hidden Valley Bushcraft. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Hit the like, sh share, and subscribe button, and we'll see you guys soon. Bye for now.